What's up? Welcome to Nostalgia. Dave here with a review of Secret Invasion, the latest Marvel Cinematic Universe TV series on Disney+. Plus. going to talk about the whole season and what it means. We're talking about Marvel as a whole. And yeah, a lot to get into. Secret Invasion wrapped up last week, and of course, full spoilers from here on out. Secret Invasion wrapped up a week ago, and six episodes later, it just feels like the Marvel Nadir. You know, I was having a decent enough time with Secret Invasion as it was going. I thought it was a fun premise, fun way to start it off, but I had reservations. I think a lot of people had reservations, both about the series itself and about the MCU itself and how those reservations connect. In some ways, they don't. And I think the overwhelming issue with Secret Invasion is that it once again exposes the flaws of the six-episode miniseries that MCU has done on Disney+, Plus, where they're not long enough and deep enough to really deliver something beyond just being a movie. And thus, they are inferior to movies because they are just kind of padded out and smaller stakes. On top of that, of course, the MCU has felt quite listless for a few years now post-Endgame as a cohesive new connective tissue, you know, which is, again is the heartbeat of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. That connective tissue has not really presented itself. We were expecting that to come into focus with Kang replacing Thanos as that big bad. That has still not happened yet. We'll see what happens with Loki Season 2. Trailer looks promising. But Secret Invasion, I think, you know, my early reservations were that it just wasn't going to feel consequential given how we were set up. And it, it became pretty clear that, oh, it's probably just going to be Rhodey, War Machine, Don Cheadle. That's probably the guy who's actually a scroll because he's the only significant character on the show besides Samuel L. Jackson. Turns out that was correct because why? what else would have happened, you know? And, man, you know, kind of doing the, like, you know, our thriller vibe with Marvel it sounds good until you see what it actually becomes. And it's kind of a bit of a shame to waste perhaps the most talented cast Marvel has had in a show yet. Samuel L. Jackson, Ben Mendelsohn, Livia Coleman, Kingsley Benadir, Don Cheadle, Livia Coleman, Amelia Clark. Martin Freeman a little bit. It's loaded. Absolutely loaded. And it just doesn't feel like it really comes together enough. You know, this this the secret, this this scroll threat. Uh you know, obviously I think the scrolls being being on Earth for so many years, being part of society, hiding as humans, establishing Captain Marvel. That that that's like interesting. I've always criticized the MCU as not really feeling like it lives in world all that much. That's kinda interesting. But the like the, the core conflict of this series, where you have this uh, faction of scrolls led by Kingsley Benadir's character Gravik, and they want their own home world, or they're going to just take over Earth instead. This kind of like dissident rebel group amidst refugees, scroll refugees, it just felt very familiar to Falcon and the Winter Soldier's plot, you know. I was very hard on Falcon and the Winter Soldier when that came out in 2021. But in hindsight, it's a lot better than this show. You know? Uh, it just Even if it flubs some of its thematic choices, it also kind of lands a lot of its planes. Secret Invasion tries to be a lot about like Nick Fury as a character. This is the most screen time we've ever seen Samuel L. Jackson get as Nick Fury at any one time. And despite all that, there's still not enough time to really do much. You know? And I really just loathe the resolution where Samuel Jackson returns to Earth from being in the space, saber spaceship, whatever, to start the show. And at the end of the show, he just goes back to space. Again, it's as if nothing happened. And yeah, did um, the President of the United States kind of declare war against scrolls and other aliens at the end of this show? Sure. But I don't have any faith in the MCU storytelling to like make that feel like that's a something that matters in terms of the changing of the MCU world. You know, a lot's been made of um, the ending where Ben Mendelsohn's character, Talos, his daughter, Gaia, played by Amelia Clark, Gaia gets basically powered up 
with a bunch of powers from characters we know, such as Drax, and Captain Marvel, and the Hulk. And um, this was the result of the harvest, where Fury and some of his scroll underlings basically harvested DNA of Avengers and whatnot for, for purpose, for science, and for, for reasons, you know? Interesting premise, sure. Kind of the fun stuff we like about MCU kind of retconning stuff into its past. But criticism, of course, is that Gaia is now just fucking goaded. Really dumb, dummy strong. You know, very powerful. And I, I feel bad for Amelia Clark, where now this is going to be weighed on her. Obviously, this was not her decision to have the character go this route. But it's a bit of a corner that I think they have to write themselves out of where maybe Gaia loses those powers or things wear off. or They have to fix some of it because it just it feels a bit game-breaking right now. And they just they just need to rectify something like that. But the finale also resolves with, oh, we've uh, negotiated with the Kree out in space yonder. They're, they're willing to have peace talks. The scrolls, we can get you that home world. It's like nothing is earned with anything like that, you know? And, I mean, they try to do stuff with Fury's home life and his wife. And I think some of that stuff's actually not bad, but... This is just a series that really would have been better served if this was the lead up to to films, you know, by several films. But of course, the kind of fake out everyone's a scroll this whole time. It's kind of like, oh, some of those guys were Hydra this whole time. We've done this with Winter Soldier already. It's a, it's a familiar MCU beat, you know. There's been some criticism of Rhodey being a scroll. People are curious the timing of that. Does that mean that Rhodey crying at Tony Stark's funeral is fake, not real? There's some emotional moments between Rhodey and Stark in Endgame. People have feeling some type of way about that. Again, I think they have to write themselves into uh, how this is timed so that that is not the case. Not as precious about something like that. I think it's all right. But yeah, I think I just... Secret Invasion, it's both not distinct enough from recent pod properties like The Winter Soldier and Falcon the Winter Soldier for different reasons, but also it's not like its own entity regardless due to the constraints of these Disney Plus series that, and it's also not being served by the wider MCU storytelling, which feels so listless that there's just a lot of things working against it. And I think if this came out at a different time of the MCU, People might be a bit more forgiving of what it actually is, but we're not at that time right now. We know, of course, that Marvel is going to be paring back their series. Remember, a few other series were planned for 2023. That's been changed. We're now only getting Secret Invasion and Loki for the whole year. Obviously, 2022 was very busy with MCU properties, right? On, on TV. We know they've made some more that aren't even dated right now. So I think the strategy is wildly changing. But the movie strategy, the movie storytelling, needs to be the focus, and that needs to be good for the shows to, I think, have people's attention and and goodwill. And right now, we're just kind of lacking in that goodwill department. So, yeah, it's not that I hated the show. I mean, a lot's been made of, like, the Rotten Tomatoes score of the finale, which is a flawed way to measure anything. But... Yeah, it just uh, doesn't quite come together. And given the state of Marvel, it's a bad time for something like that to happen. You know? Uh, Now, I'll be very curious to see... We know Loki's coming in October. That's been done. But all the Marvel movies that were dated for 2024, such as Deadpool and Wolverine, Deadpool 3, whatever that's called, Thunderbolts, uh, those movies are still shooting, you know? Uh, Captain America 4, I believe, is like basically done. That's like the one. There's some issues with the strike, so we'll see how those dates hold. But right now, we're looking at Loki and the Marvels to end the year, and I'm going into the Marvels with an open mind. It would be nice if it kind of played off some of the Secret Invasion stuff with the Skrulls. I'm not sure if it's going to, but we'll see. Uh, Marvel needs to Right the ship, it's nothing new at this point. Secret Invasion 
it's not my least favorite of the MCU shows, but given its timing, it has definitely made perhaps the biggest negative impact. So let me know, how are you feeling about Secret Invasion? How are you feeling about the MCU in general these days? And for more TV reviews, more movie reviews, Marvel reviews, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.